number of islands given an m by n 2d binary grid grid which represents a max uh, a map of ones uh, of land and zeros in water return the number of islands an island is surrounded by water uh, and is formed by connecting adjacent lands horizontally or vertically so not diagonally We don't have to consider diagonally. Um, okay. My first thought, if, if we're looking for like contiguous ones, my first thought is a sort of sliding window approach. Maybe we could do a sort of sliding window in two directions. And then you could then, uh, let's see, if you got all of the contiguous ones, so this has one horizontal island, this has two, and this has two, so that's five. Um... What I mean by, sorry, this says one. So what I mean by that is count. Uh, my first thought is count the islands if they were 1D in both directions. So we do it horizontally and vertically. And then we could just check to see which islands are atop one another. Or we could just go through those now horizontal islands and see if they don't line up with any vertical islands. So this right here, we have zero through three, and then Okay, I've got a couple ideas. Maybe not both directions, but how about count contiguous ones in the first row. And then or should we say like maybe we'll sort of like condense it Oh, wait, yeah, I've totally got it. Okay, so what if we condense it? Condense each row to tuples, where each tuple is the start and end index of contiguous ones. Okay. No, wait, that wouldn't work. Um, here's why. Uh, well, and then my idea would be to basically then go through each row from then on and say, okay, if there's no... Um, this is just the number of islands, so this would be one island. And then we'd go through... columns well we'd go through all the rows beyond and we'd say okay so we have continuous rows right here but is any of this directly below any of this yes well then that's all still one island so you don't have to subtract anything 
because you've already ca counted one island right here. So this is still attached to this, so it's still one island. This is still attached to this, so that's still one island. And this is attached to this, so it's still one island. Then, the only thing that I'm thinking is that we had to account for when the first row is merged by the second row. So if you had something like this, when you go through the first row, it looks like it's all one, uh, it looks like it's two different islands. But the second row causes it to be merged together. So how do we account for that situation? Because I think that that would work. I think that that works. Essentially, go through each row and count all streaks of ones but if that streak touches a one above don't count it but then we just need to account for that first row um The problem is that we also can't just treat it like we had to worry about the second row because we could have something like this. Oh wait, but that would still be just, that still wouldn't affect the count. Maybe we say Oh, wait, I've got an idea. For each row after the first one, for each contiguous um, ones, count the number of um, streaks above that it touches. If it's zero, then that's a new island. If it's one, then there's no change in the number of islands. Meaning that if you have one zero and then you do one zero, that's still just one island. But if you do, if neither of them are touching, then that's two islands. Okay. If it's greater than one, then you would actually subtract from island count and that subtraction would be, this can all be one thing. Um, okay, wait, I've got it. So you would add to, okay, for each set of contiguous rows, Add to the count one minus the num adjacent, the num, I'm gonna say num below. Okay, that's good. So 
now I think we've handled situations like this. Um, but um, I, I have one more situation to consider. If we have something like this, then we have two islands. And then we look at this row, and it's still two islands. But then this third row comes along, and it merges it all together. So this is touching two. Um, so we do one minus two is negative one. So we have two islands. We subtract one. This is all one island. Okay. But what if it's a donut? Does that work? We have one island. This is still one island. But then this, that's the gotcha. We have one island. We still have one island. But then this is like, oh, I'm touching two. So that means I'm merging two islands. But those islands are already merged. Let's see, does the topics help us out at all? Those islands are already merged. We could Could we have just another number, like, already merged? So this is 111. And then we say 101. Uh, but there's no... I would have to then consider a way to... Um, see if these are touching the same island. I think it's just too many gotchas to do this system. So we'll try out a new system. What if we just try finding edges of each island? Um, so how do we do that? We could iterate through until we find land. Um, yeah, we could iterate through until we find land. Then Do we just like map it out? So we, since we found the land by going from left to right, well, I guess the recursion would just have to have us check up, down, left, right. Um, and then we don't have to worry about if we've already found that because if we're finding the edge of each island,
but the gotcha there, let's see. So what I mean is basically just like, okay, so the first one's a one. So now we see, okay, is the next one a one? No, okay, well, we check all of its neighbors. And then for every neighbor, we check all their neighbors. Um, And then we could have like another grid that keeps track of the ones that we already searched. So that's when we're done mapping out an island. We know. When we're done mapping out an island, we know where to, cont to go off of. To see. It's pretty fairly generous constraints so maybe I shouldn't worry so much about time so that's an idea recursively check all neighbors check um so first let's hold on to this we'll have second grid of boolean second same size grid of boolean values tracking whether or not it's been found or checking whether tra tracking if it's been looked at Recursively check all neighbors. Check if the neighbor has already been looked at. If it's a, if the neighbor is a one, oh, no, no, we could just say, okay, wait, okay, I think that's it. I think that could work. So basically, we'd have a map, and we'd say, we already looked at this cell on the grid, and then that would allow us to say, um, to recursively look through all the values. Because I would look at one value, and if it's a one, then I would say, okay, well, check all of its neighbors, too. And so I'd say, when, I, when I, I, I'm like, okay, well, let me look to the guy to, the, to his right. Has he already been looked at? If he hasn't, then um, if he's a one, then check all of his neighbors. If he's a zero, then no need to recurse. You don't need to check to see Okay, I think that's it. You don't need to check to see if you don't need to check to see um, check a neighbor if you've already looked at them. Um, and you don't need to check if there's anything beyond a zero because if it's like a donut thing, then don't worry, the recursion's got you handled. Because sure, you go this direction and then you're like, okay, well, can we go down? No, but we're not worried about never reaching these because we'll go to the right and then the right will go down and the down will go 
the right will go down and then the down will go left. Okay. Let's do that. Okay, so... Um, bin checked is going to be that boolean array, and that's going to be false for R in range, we'll say, okay, M by N. Okay, M is the grid length. Okay. Okay, so M is length of grid. Um, N is length of grid zero bin checked it's false for r, um for r in range m for you know for c in range n for r in range m so we're making the same we're making a copy of the grid but it's just holding true or false values, and that's going to track whether or not we've already looked at a grid to aid us in our search. Okay. Now we'll say for R in range. Now we just go through that. So for R in range M, for um, C in range um, N, if, okay, um, cell equals okay well no first we'll check if bin checked so with the same coordinates we can check to see if this one has already been checked if it's been checked then just continue we don't need to bother looking at it Okay. If it hasn't been checked, then we want to recursively check the neighbors. Actually, we'll say if now we can we don't need to recursively check the neighbors if we're looking at a zero. So we can say if grid. I'm gonna delete all this because I don't think it's getting me anywhere. grid okay if grid r c equals ocean then we can continue i guess we can just have that be one or okay so we're saying if we've already looked at this tile or it's ocean, no need to start neighbor recursion. Okay, so let's write a function to check that. So say define check neighbor recurse. Um, and this will be given just R and C because we'll just access the grid with those values. Um, so first, we'll say, um, we'll start by terminating the recursion. So you keep going while you see land until you see nothing. In which case, you say, oh, this, if this works, I'd be happy. Okay, in which case you say if grid R C is ocean, i.e. if we reached the end of the island, just return. We also want to set that value to bin checked. So we're going to say bin checked. R, C. So we've already looked at this, and that equals true. If it's ocean, then we do that. Otherwise, 
we sp we we check all the four neighbors. So we say if r is greater than zero, because we have to make sure that we're not going out of the map. If r is greater than zero, then we'll run check neighbor recurse on um, r plus one c. If um, r is less than m minus one, because it's the length, and we want to be, we, it's not just that r is less than the last one, we want to make sure that r is one left of the last one. Um, then we're going to say check neighbor recurse, sorry, r minus one, r plus one. And then we're going to do the same thing, but for c. So we're going to check recurse above. Um, we actually want to, we'll just check the same condition. And, or we've already looked here. Um, I am worried about redundancy because like, instead of saying, okay, just skip until, I mean, I can't really think of a more elegant solution. I am worried about redundancy because Basically, I'm just, I'm not saying, okay, go to the next one that we haven't looked at. I'm just saying every single cell, check to make sure we haven't already looked at it. And then C is greater than zero and C is less than M, N minus one. Um, R would be the same, C is there. I uh, would say C plus one, and we don't need to worry about diagonals. C minus one. And C plus one. Okay. Um, that should actually be okay. Oh, wait. We were about to have a major problem because we were about to set, we need to check if it's been checked before we do that. Because otherwise we're going to say, okay, we've checked this one. And then we say, have we already checked it? And the answer would be yes, every time. So let me recurse. Um, otherwise, if we haven't do that, done that, then we'll just, we'll have a count called island count. Um, and we'll just say island count plus equals one. And then we'll just start the recursion. of R and C. Okay, so that makes sense in my head. It could be a little long. Then do we return it? Yeah, return the number of islands. So then return island count. So to reiterate, we make a, a, two, a, a matching, a corresponding 2D array that tracks whether or not we've already looked at a cell we iterate through all the cells if we've already looked at it then no need to go any further just skip to the next cell if it's a zero then no need to start the recursion there because the island hasn't started yet if it's a one well otherwise it has to be a one um actually i need to check this after the fact oh okay but then does would that start an endless loop if we check it after the fact would we just get an endless loop? Yeah, we would. Um, oh, no, we don't need to because the, the, the loop will take care of that for us. Sorry, no, no, that's... Sorry, I was looking at the totally wrong thing. No, no, no. 
it won't start an endless loop because we recurse after we check that. So we check if it's already been looked at. We now say that we've already looked at this one. And then we check all of its neighbors. And the same thing goes. Um, then we start that island count. And every time that we see a new island being noticed by seeing new land that we haven't seen before and we'll have checked out all the land of every island because we'll, that recursion goes until it sees water. Okay. This could be it. Come on. Okay. Invalid syntax. Why is that upset? False for C. What's it upset about? Should I say false times N What? Ah, wait. What am I forgetting? Should I just have it be that? Times N times N. Okay. Well, that's cool. It worked for that. But why didn't it work for this? Um, it's going to be like one small error. I just know it. Okay. Debug. Okay, so we should be looking at so this should return three and we should be looking at the first like square of nine um, it went one beyond that That's weird. Why did it go one beyond that? Um, Oh, this is going to be a, a pain to look at. So then it should be true for the first one. And then it should be... Why did it set all of those values to true?
Let's just put a little thing at all of our debugging moments. Okay. Wait, false, 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 false. Okay. So we have just a grid of two by two, so we should get a three by three grid. Sorry, not a three by three grid, but rather a sort of like a cross. Like, so not the bottom right corner. So bin checked equals true. Okay, that's right. Wait, what? Bin checked RC equals true. What? Why is it setting? Why is it setting? Everything in been checked. Okay, so we get RC, which hasn't been checked, and it does equal 1, meaning we up island count and then start the recursion. So now we check the same thing because we need that for its, its buddies, its neighbors. Um, What? Why? What is it? It should only be setting one. If we made it be equal to one, would it just set all those equal to one? So this should set them all to one. Why? What? Huh? Is it because these are technically all the same row? That could be it. Or C in range N or R in range M. I was never closed. Wait, we need to surround that by, because we're not clarifying that it's a an array. OK. Now let's see. Okay, just set the first one. Yes! There we go. Give me that. Woo! All right! Yeah! <laughs> oh, that was good. That was good debugging. That was great debugging. What a weird error that was. I'm glad I had the debugger. Um, Because I would never have... Uh... I mean, that would have been tricky. I would have had to use a lot of print statements. 
But um, yeah, so that's good to know. You can't just, if you multiply something, then what you're doing is you're making a bunch of the same, if you're multiplying values to get a 2D array, you're really getting the same array over and over. It's not, they're not actually distinct arrays. They're copies of one array. Woo! Wow, that is a funky bug. But we did it. We did it, and that's pretty good time. I actually prefer seeing numbers like that to numbers like 100%. Because when I see 100%, I'm like, nah, something's wrong here. But there we go. Okay, let's see if anyone else said anything similar. Um, yeah, check four directions. And the place is not visited yet. There we go. And this is, um, it's adding to an array of Vizia, but that's resizing the array every time. Well, that's actually not. It's a set. All right. Way to go, Kyle. I did it. <laughs> that's awesome.